Hello everybody, this is going to be a quick demo to show you off um, some of the problems we have with finality and uh, iterating over an integer i in a loop and some of the ways we can possibly solve it. So first of all, let's just uh, write a quick program like for int i equals 0, i less than 10, i plus plus, everyone should be familiar with this. And we're just going to print i. Right? So if I run this, right, we'll see that it prints out those numbers in order. Okay. If I want to make this a parallel program, I'll put in async here. I'll put um, my code back in. Of course, wrap the whole thing in a finish. And You'll notice it's got a problem, right? Like it won't compile this. And this is again, this whole finality situation. We're trying to access i right in here, which means that it has to be final. But if we do that, then we are not allowed to do this increment. So one of the things you can do, and it feels kind of cheesy, is you can say int like sort of underscore i equals i. That sort of hardens it at that moment. And then we're able to do it. Okay, so that's the first thing you can do is you can always make sort of a variable that's changing and then just before you do the async you can sort of harden it into this other. So if that doesn't feel very satisfying to always have to make one of these uh, variables and then create a second variable that gets assigned to it, there's some other options. So first of all there's what's called in integer stream. So again we're going to um, do a finish block, make some loop and then put an async inside. With this, Java's added a bunch of streams. So let me do an int stream here. int stream dot range from zero to 10. Right? And that'll make um, a stream. And then you can for each one in there. And again, I could type body again and, and make a lambda. But this is a lambda that accepts a very uh, a parameter i, right? So now we have our i in this guy. We can async for each iteration of this range and sys out and print line i. And it's you know uh, the fact that we do it this way, we don't have to worry about making one of these variables and copying it all the time. So let's run that, and we can see that. You know, we print out for the first wave, and now we print it with the second wave, so they're both working. Okay, so if you don't like um, using the standard Java integer stream, you don't want to do this range, you don't want to make a lambda um, with a parameter, and like that's a little bit too much for you, we've added another uh, construct for you um, that's an iterable, and it's um, what's what we've called as an integer range. So for this, we're going to say for int i in new integer range. And we can go again from 0 to 10. And again, we can async in here. And everybody, we can sys out i. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them all into prints so we can see uh, the output on a single line. Um, so if I do this, you can now see that they're all running and they're all printing. If I look into this integer range, um, this is code that we wrote, and you just do the start and finish it, and it's an iterable, right? So it manages the whole thing of making it so that um, in, in turn it'll iterate from 0 to 10. It may feel a little crazy, but what's happening is that it's allowed to make this final even though it's changing each iteration. If that seems strange to you, uh, don't feel bad, but uh, Java is trying its hardest to make this convenient. 